out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad. And this video is kind of like an open letter to any game developer that wants to employ medieval weapons in their games, both for combat animations, but also just basic stances and many other things. It, this video is particularly inspired by Elden Ring because I've made a video looking and really taking a close analysis at the weapons, but also combat animations in that game. And what's been really interesting, they nailed some of the attack animations, but completely failed in the attack animations of other weapons. And so, it seems like they definitely wanted to add a type of authentic, realistic flavor to the attack animations, and they uh, obviously did their research where they could, but in a lot of areas, it does seem like they were just assuming or making up how you would naturally want to use these weapons in their video game, and as a result, unfortunately, they do fail in some pretty significant ways in not only how heavy the weapons should be depicted and how they're used, but just the general uh, competence and uh, effective, sophisticated techniques that do exist with many medieval weapons. And so what I wanna do in this video is go through all the primary medieval weapons that we often see in video games, kind of using Elden Ring as a base point, so I like to launch off from, so I'll be looking at a lot of the base standard weapons that Elden Ring has, and I want to show some more realistic move sets from the beginning stance to up to maybe four to six combo moves that could easily be adapted into a video game in terms of the attack animations. The reason why I'm doing this is because video games are massively popular. I love them, and for many people, their first exposure to medieval martial arts will be through video games or films. But we have a much better chance at influencing more accurate medieval video game combat than film, because a lot of filmmakers simply don't care about accurately representing history, and are happy to spread falsehoods because they think they know what looks better. The arrogance annoys me so much, but many video game developers have shown that they do care, and even when they get things wrong, there are signs that they have tried. Also, video games are an easier market to break into than mainstream films and a lot of indie developers that love the history their games draw inspiration from have much better chances of breaking into the mainstream than indie filmmakers that love our history. So I hope the examples I give in this video will be good enough at making some great weapon movesets that would be an awesome basis and reference point for video game combat animations. But even so, they will barely scratch the surface of what could be put together, and there are many creators and people who train in medieval weapons that could do a much better job than me. So to that end, I invite others to join me. For anyone interested, please put together a moveset combo like what we see in many video games. anything from four to eight movements, but the combos we make will be founded on practical and realistic historical martial arts, and will look much better as a result. I'd love to see a combo for each primary weapon type. These are dagger, short sword, arming sword, long sword, great sword, battle axe, great axe, mace, war hammer, pole hammer, halberd, pole axe, spear, shield combo, dual wielding bows, and crossbows. If that list is too long, and admittedly it's a long list, feel free to just do the weapons you specialize in. Then put all the combos you make into a video and upload it with the hashtag in the description or the title of the video, Medieval Combat Reference. All one word. Hashtag medieval combat reference. If you're wondering what such a video could look like, just keep watching this video to see my examples. I'd like to personally invite the pre-established medieval weapons YouTube channels in the community of the sword to join me in this project. Specifically, Scholar Gladiatoria, Scarlagrim, Metatron, Lindy Beige, Living Anachronism, Modern History TV, Todd's Workshop, The Swordsman Frederico Malaguti, Roland Rosecca, Life, Death and Fencing, Pursuing the Knightly Arts, London Longsword Academy, Knight Squire, Thane Thran, Snap Jelly, Nate V of Sword Savvy. And I know there are more and I'm sorry if I've missed one. I invite everyone who watches this video to subscribe to these channels and keep an eye out for the 
hashtag medieval combat reference videos they make. Of course, that's if they'd like to join me in this project. I've tried to highlight those channels that are more focused on the usage of medieval weapons, and sorry if I missed one, but even if you're not a pre-established channel and would still like to join in, I would love to see your ideas, the best move sets you can come up with as a basis for video game combat animations with the hashtag medieval combat reference. By using a hashtag, all my viewers who are interested can find your videos, but also so I can find your videos, because once enough of them have been made with this hashtag, I'll pick my favourite ones from pre-established channels or first-time uploaders, it won't matter, and review my favourite historically inspired combat movesets in a follow-up video, explaining why I like them, featuring them to my audience, and recommending the channels or individuals who made them. Together, I'm hoping we can make a whole body of work that video game developers can use as reference materials for their medieval weapons animations, and get the attention of larger game developers to encourage them to represent the historically inspired weapons they use in their video games more accurately and to improve their games as a result. Even if you can't or simply not interested in making your own medieval combat reference video, you can still help by sharing this video to as many game developers as you can think of or would like to share it with, and other medieval weapons channels, letting them know that you would like to see a medieval combat reference video from them, as I would love to see a video from them as well. So, let me show you some examples that I've come up with of better, more historically accurate weapon combos that could be used in video game combat animations. Now, I am going to consider a couple of important things because one, there are thousands of different moves that you could do with any given weapon. And so we're gonna try and focus on the some basic, fundamental, more applicable attacks chaining them together in a combo. We want to pick, uh, like, for instance, the starting attack is going to be very important because that's the attack that most players will use, especially when you're fighting a boss or creatures. Some creatures only take one or two hits, and so those are the attacks that you will see most often. And one, it should look good, but also it shouldn't look so crazy uh, unique or specific that it feels like a specific animation. I'm not sure if you've experienced, but I've experienced it when there is a kind of a more unique main attack that every time you use it again and again and again, it starts to feel like that you're just watching a robot and not a warrior that's just doing a basic straightforward attack to begin with. So that's an important thing to consider. Stance will, will consider as well, as well as movement, because these attacks should work well for the character, the uh, avatar, standing still, but also moving forward in the attacks. And so we're going to consider all those. I'm going to be going slowly to try and show the movement and motion as clear as possible. A lot of the examples I'm going to be giving can show slight telegraphing, because in gameplay design, telegraphing is important, especially in PvP, to give uh, your opponents a chance to block, defend, and things like that, which is very contrary to uh, real combat, where you actually, unless you're doing a feint or something like that, or you see an opening and uh, you can put more weight into it, outside of those examples, telegraphing can be really bad because your opponent will see it and easily block. And so in a lot of attacks, you want to reduce telegraphing as much as possible. But there's a middle point where, even from like a basic stance, I stepped on a on a leaf. But anyway, even from a basic stance like this, a simple easy attack that doesn't do much telegraphing is a straight thrust right from here. But for a gameplay design, you could add small little things to help players kind of see, oh, this is about to happen. For instance, a, for a slow forward step like this, or a slow lean in a thrust, this is a small little telegraph you could put into the animation to balance the gameplay. And you just go, something like that, okay? So you could absolutely do more realistic movesets in video game combat animations and balance them mechanically so no one moveset is overpowered versus another or weapons because balance is a very important thing in gameplay design. We'll start with the small weapons and work our way up. And to begin with, of course, it will be daggers. One of the preferences in game design would be to pick animations in which they can do double duty, heavy lifting. And that, what I mean here is an animation that can be used for a forward step or a stationary movement that could be combined with a shield or without that you don't need a whole new animation for a shield. I kind of would prefer a whole different animation set if you incorporate something as important as a shield, because that's one of the flaws that we see in a lot of game design. As soon as they give in a shield, they use the same animation and people often swing the shield completely out of position when they perform an attack. 
But with daggers, you would assume picking the basic primary beginning attack would be easy, but errors have been done. For instance, in Elden Ring, the main attack they have with dagger is slashes. And the primary way you'd want to use a dagger is, of course, a thrust. Now, something like this is a very basic animation, and you could do it with a different step as well, but you could mix it up to show a little bit more form, like maybe a thrust like this, where you're leading into it, you're raising your arm, you're putting in kind of a defense. If there's a cross guard, you're ready to parry. And that one can be done stationary, it can be done stepping, and it can be duplicated with a shield, just like so, and the shield held in position. Same if you use a different type of shield, like a buckler, you can still do the same animation, stepping, and depending on the level of detail, the devs could really just spam this attack even when they want to step. So you go, attack, attack, attack. It shows form, it's good enough, but then you would want perhaps some combo moves to help mix it up. So that first attack is gonna be the main one that most players will use most often, especially against weaker foes, and because it's a leading attack. But you do want to consider a chain combo, and there are many different options, but you want something that is uh, generic enough so it doesn't really look like it's a robot doing it, but could also be reused to say if you use a shield. And so we've got the leading attack, and you could follow it up with a second attack like this, and then you could come up and like just even this, a two attack combo works really well, both stationary and when you're moving. But what if you wanted to have a strong finisher on the fourth move where you go attack, attack, attack. And in this, this last one, because usually, and we see this in Elden Ring, the final attack in the combo is a heavier attack, rewarding the player for being able to hit the opponent that many times. And from this, the, so this position, you could wind up just a big attack like that or something. And so altogether, this four move combo would simply be that their stance should be something as simple as this. They could raise it, lower it, but if they're wanting a really active stance, something like this, okay, would work really, really well. And so from the beginning stance, that four move combo is attack, 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 and then a big attack. Now I did say we we're gonna start with small weapons and work our way up, but I wanna point out something really interesting in terms of you making certain animations do double duty. And it's that that entire animation sequence can be applied just as easily to a rapier. You could hold it in the same guard position, raise or lower, and it's the same leading attack, and then reverse attack, attack, and then big attack. A four move combo that's vastly more realistic can actually be applied to both dagger and rapier. It has a basic leading attack that can be used stationary and moving and can be employed with multiple different types of shields at the same time. A lot of the same principles we talked about applies to dual wielding as well. The offhand dagger, in terms of historically grounded combat, would act more like a parrying hand. And so if you put it in the same position as the shield, that can work fine, but there are other stances you could do because now you have a parrying thing. You could reverse the stance. This is the protecting leading one. And you could still use the same beginning animation where we go down for a stab, but instead of the regular one that we went to, we can just follow up with a low stab and then the regular one like we did before. And then we can keep going. And so we go stab, 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 stab as a joint combo, and then, again, you could end with the big stab, or a big double stab like that. Perfectly fine, it would be more historically inspired, and again, the animations we just went through could be applied if we had a rapier in this hand and a dagger in this hand, or if we had two rapiers. Now, we are talking about if the game developers want to be particularly conservative with their animations, but if they've got the budget and want to go the extra mile, I would like to see a new unique animation set for every different kind of thing. When you have a dagger and shield or buckler or rapier and dagger, two daggers, where you don't necessarily need to always use the same move set that we've developed with the dagger, but with two daggers, instead of the leading attack as we did before, you could have a completely unique move set where you could just go stab stab as the beginning attack because two weapons, you should be able to get two hits for one attack, you know, press, and it's just there, just stab, stab. And then, resetting back to the regular stance. The sun's obviously come out, uh, there'll be uneven lighting because it's going behind clouds and out of clouds, so hope you can just uh, bear with it. Now, in terms of short swords, this is an interesting one, because short swords can be 
quite heavy for their size or as light as you might suppose because they are smaller and as a result short swords actually have more justification to be the, the animations to be mixed with either dagger or arming sword or both and so you could do strong slashing attacks round and look, a basic figure eight is fine, as long as you return to center. What isn't fine are these big slashes where they're going like this. And we see in a lot of games, Elden Ring, I'm looking at you. By the way, just, I think I already mentioned, but I do want to re-emphasize. It really does seem like the devs who made Elden Ring from software are actually really trying to do accurate animations because they did some bangers really good ones, but they just lack the reference or information or material to make a lot of the other medieval weapons just as accurate, because they, the two-handed katana animations are beautiful, but a lot of the medieval ones, complete miss. Again, I think it's about reference and information while I'm making this video, and I hope with this video, it'll either inspire or be a springboard to do further study to realize there are some awesome, sophisticated animations that you could give to medieval weapons to make them look more realistic, but also make the avatar look like they're competent, trained, they know what they're doing, because to a trained eye, that animation where it's like, we see it a lot with arming swords, is like this big wide slash, then step slash, then step slash, looks so untrained, wild, one of my knights here made a great point that this type of thing could work really good if you actually had a skill mechanic and your character with low skill did these really wild, untrained swings, but as their skill rose, then they actually have more sophisticated, controlled, precise attacks that actually looks like they know an authentic martial arts that's associated with it. But few games actually even do that. And so if they're just gonna have a base animation line, it should be something that shows that the character knows what they're doing and they're not just flailing about wildly. And so because short sword can logically be, you know, mix and match between dagger and arming sword, I'm gonna go straight to arming sword and do show some good move sets with that. Now you could use some of the animations from the dagger. A starting stance like this is perfectly viable for an arming sword. And if you think the arming sword is too heavy, but it was okay for a rapier, rapiers weigh as much as arming swords. They're not a lighter weapon. And yes, there are stances where you hold them out like this, okay? It's a workout on the arm. But if you wanted a different one, basic over the top stance like this works perfectly fine. It could work with no nothing in their offhand or with a shield. It works with moving. And then the basic attack, very simple, just slash back in position, slash back in position. Already, can you see that there's more structure and form to it than a lot of the ones where it's just, it's on the side like this and it's slash, slash like that compared to something here. And they have their hand ready and it's just slash. And if you need the telegraphing, remember, you just do a big, so a small slight wind up and it can work in step, 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 just like that. It's at the ready, slash, 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 but we want combos, don't we? Now the attack that we were just doing would work perfectly fine with a shield or not, but actually before we do go into the combos, I do want to show some other perhaps, you know, beginning attacks, because you don't need to just do this basic one. You could do a large upward strike, but that is more unique that would lead into a follow through, which is of course this, that could be a thrust, down hit, okay? And so there are so many options, but even with those ones that I was showing briefly and casually, I hope you can see that there's so much more sophistication and technique behind the brutish, attacks, right? Because there are so many options from this position. You can go with a sideways attack and then follow up with a back edge attack just like that. And so if you're here, sideways, back edge, and then from here, slash, downwards cut, again slash, big cut. Well, it frustrates me. They show certain weapons to be very elegant in Elden Ring, but a lot of the medieval ones not to be. And so the scimitar, which is really a sham shear, and the katana have much more sophistication in their movesets than long sword, arming sword, short sword, great sword. You come with the katana and Elden Ring, it's a precision. It's a precision, and then they have another cut, and I'll be sure, they were great. It shows that they can do it, but the medieval ones, it's kind of perpetuating that myth that these are heavier, crude weapons. In fact, they actually weigh less than most katanas. 
of that size, yeah, the katana is actually a specifically heavy weapon for its size. This arming sword is as long as many standard katanas. Not the um, Uchi katana in Elden Ring, that's a big, that's like an O katana. All right, but a basic, but also, you know, sophisticated four move combo for an arming sword, standing in this position, that could work with a shield or not. You start with the same cut where it's cut, but then you could go reverse cut, then we're gonna move to a slash, end with a finish, a big cut. So that's cut, cut, stab, slash. And this slash, you don't need to overswing too much. If you wanna convey power, this is one where I'd be like, it's possible, plausible, where you wanna end with a big cut, but you don't need to. You could end with just a big step forward cut, end in position, I'll show it straight on, slash, slash, stab, cut, big cut, and you can end it there without overswinging. Now, if we're gonna be using similar animations between an arming sword and short sword, it does raise the question, what's the point of a short sword? And honestly, like nearly every single video game I've played that has short swords, no one uses them. They're like a completely useless category. Maybe that's why Elden Ring combined short swords into the straight sword category. But there are unique points for short swords that should give them an advantage. One, they could cut really, really well, and in a lot of cases, better than arming swords. This Gladius cuts better than this arming sword. It can thrust just as well, but its reach isn't as good. And so, for a gameplay mechanic, you could have a balance like that. Short swords could do better cutting damage, maybe less thrusting damage, or the same, but their hitbox is less because of range. Does that make him useless? Well, you could give him an advantage in closed confines, like caves or dungeon. I'll take this moment now to mention that I've been focusing on a lot of animations that could be combined with the shield in such a way that you wouldn't actually need to change the animation. And so if we have a look at that combo we just developed, you could hold out a shield for most of it and uh, still be able to defend yourself. So from this position, we can do the attack, the attack, we can go to here, attack, and then the finisher all while holding the shield in front and maintaining a defense. One of the biggest pet peeves I have with shields, and because Elden Ring is our point of reference here, Elden Ring fails at this in a big way, but then not when you're using, say, a spear or a rapier, because they allow you to thrust while you hold the shield out. Thank goodness, at least there's that. But whenever you use a shield, you want to use it for defense. And in nearly every other animation, they swing the shield out of position when they do their attacks like this. It's like they're not even holding it. It's utterly nonsensical for how you would fight with a shield. So just pay attention with any weapon that I'm using one hand. I'd like to try and make it so you could employ a shield with defense, even with those same animations. And so it's attack, attack, thrust, slash. This isn't perfect because on the counter thrust, the shield isn't defending. So you might want to replace that animation with something else when you're using a shield because the shield, like when you hold up the block, should be, you shouldn't even really have to press block to hold the shield up in defense. It should be almost a passive bonus to defense uh, in terms of gameplay mechanics. Now, you might've noticed I've changed my outfit. It's getting too hot out here for the Brigandine and Gamerson. So this is my summer outfit. Now, when it comes to dual wielding arming swords, honestly, I think there's gonna be too much of a change in style to use the same animations that we had developed. You could get away with it using this one as a primary form of defense. You would need to lower it in the first attack and then the second attack, but we want to employ the arming sword. And so what I would probably do is have this in the same position, have that out for defense, because it's gonna be a primary blocking defensive weapon, but you then switch. And so some of the attack styles for dual wielding is crossing over like this. See this? It's a completely different style, but it looks awesome. You would need a whole new animation for it, but it would be pretty cool. And so same position, attack, 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 attack. And you could end with like a big double finisher like that from the position, it would work brilliantly. So why is that combo particularly good? One, you're maintaining guard position because your attacks, uh, there's always a sword on point. And every time you withdraw a sword, you're a striking. And so it's actually doubling the speed in which you attack, because usually when you attack, you need to recover. So if it's one-handed, recover, then attack again, and then you need to recover and attack again. With this combo, you're attacking with the offhand weapon during the recovery. So it's attack, and then while this is recovering, you're attacking, same position. And so it's a much faster 
system, okay? Then you could definitely combine it with certain really fancy, almost over the top, double attacks, double slashes and things like you want to, or if you want to, you know, stab, stab, and this can be combined with maybe the dagger animations that would already be on file. This isn't the only style you could do. You could do a style where you really are employing the offhand weapon as, a, as like a shield. And so most of the attacks are kind of the same, but you could get a passive defense bonus because you're ready. This is blocking and there could be parrying animations like this. But other really good animations from this position would be a starting thrust, which could then be followed up with an attack. And then that could either be continued or you could switch to that. And it would be great if you had a mechanic to switch from any attack where we're going like this to a thrust, attack, thrust. There's lots of ways you can mix it up, but there's definitely a good combo you can find from amongst them. Next weapon, my personal favorite, the long sword. There are heaps of starting positions that you can pick from. Uh, it's unfortunate that in Elden Ring, you're just kind of holding it like this and you're just running around like this. It's not really a guard position, even when you're just standing normally. It'd be great if they adopted a good guard position and there's heaps of ones you can pick from all of them are really good you could do fool's guard you could do plow you could do long point you could do ox you could do roof all these are great stances oh yeah can't can't forget wrath basic wrath stance here and pity that Elden Ring doesn't even use one and you don't need to do the exact ones because there are variations sometimes people do plow like this I like my plow like this, it's a more similar to the kendo stance, but there's heaps of different ones that you could apply. And from each different starting position are different attacks that you could start with. You could do a reverse cut, down, there are so many. But let's just pick a very neutral middle position stance, basic, you know, type of plow. And from this, thrust, a slash, or a more elaborate cut, just like this. And I think something like that would work really well. Or a stepping cut like this. But if that's our leading cut, where you're walking around and the first cut is just a sideways slash like this, there are so many combo options you could do from here. Follow up with a, another attack that goes into a downwards attack, slash, and maybe end there. And so to show it all together, it's a slash, slash, hit, slash. Perfect and will look so much better than what we have in say, Elden Ring where it's like hit, hit, and the sword thuds the ground like it weighs a ton. Actually with longsword, I would want to push it a bit further to show some more sophisticated traditional historical techniques that would work really well. You can use this beginning attack from multiple starting positions from here, from Wrath, from Ox, many positions, but what it is, it's a basic sideways attack holding your hands up like this, ending right there. Just like with the katana animations Elden Ring has, where there's like an attack where they end in a guard position, that's what we would want to see with longsword, but from a medieval European source. And so from here, basic attack, hit, and then they can return to normal if they don't follow up. Again, hit, return to normal, and then the follow up two combo is the hit, but then reverse edge cut. So from here, cut, cut. Standing again, Cut, cut. And the brilliant four move combo that you'd want is to end on a heavy finisher. And so what we have is starting here, cut, reverse cut, slash, sorry, stab, then heavy cut. Cut, cut, stab, heavy slash. Perfect four move combo that it combines some traditional medieval long sword techniques. It shows specific stances, ending stances, keeping the guard up. Really, really good. And there's so many good combos that you could do from this starting cut. So when you go there, you go with a up cut, down cut, but when you're there, you could follow up with another one, slash. So many good things that you could choose. The combo that we just worked out can easily apply to the smaller bastard sword or the bigger war sword. Now with bastard sword, I reckon you should have the option to fight with it like an arming sword and maybe perhaps have the move set play out a little bit slower with higher damage or with the long sword you can use a bastard sword you could use a bastard sword with the long sword moves maybe a bit faster and then with war sword same move set you can do exactly what I, we talk about where you start with a cut reverse cut slash heavy finisher it works just as well with a war sword which is where the great sword category category begins because you can complete that move set with a greatsword. I don't have a full-size steel greatsword, but this uh, wooden, you know, uh, prop will work just as well. They are light enough to be able to complete this moveset. And so to start here, slash, slash, stab, heavy finisher. 
all right? The thing is though, with great swords, they have a different stereotypical move set. And these are wide slashes. And so with great swords, you can much more easily aim for the feet and rotating move set. So one of their kind of first beginning moves, holding it like this, there's a number of ways you could begin with a great sword, but the first one, upwards cut, followed by upwards cut. That would be the beginning move. So wherever you're walking as the character, you're running around, that's the attack. They can return to normal, attack, return to normal. And then the combo is attack, attack, and from there you could do a big one, heavy finisher, or you could continue all the way through. Attack, 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 and then heavy finisher. That's a five move combo. Or you could combine it with their wide sweeping slashes. Attack, attack, wide attack, wide attack. Great swords can be employed with area control where it's slash, slash, slash. This is where spinning actually works because the reverse end of the attack still protects you. So when you slash here and you're following up, you can offend behind you for another attack, just like this. Okay, and so a moveset that just goes nuts like this would be brilliant. The European Greatsword is greatly misunderstood in a lot of video games where they are often depicted as insanely heavy and unfortunately Elden Ring is no exception here. But in reality they're actually much lighter than you think, they're very elegant, sophisticated weapons and absolutely you do not need to swing around like they are a chunk of steel that you can barely lift. And we're even talking about the really big, you know, kind of Zweihander two-handed swords, but there's a lot of two-handed swords that are come in this size, like the Montante, like the Flanberg. Claymores more stereotypically are around the war sword size, but the fact that in like Elden Ring, these swords kind of hit the ground with these big attacks, where they're going like this, is completely ridiculous. You can perform all the light, elegant, long sword move sets that we talked about, with this larger war sword and even with the great sword. So let's stop depicting them as being so insanely heavy, please. Now axes admittedly are more basic weapons, but it doesn't mean you have to do these big heavy like bang, bang hits. You can fight with them in a very elegant way where you follow through and you can hit like this, you can keep the shield up and you just attack like this, keeping the shield completely in front and you could have a continuous combo hitting like that perfectly fine and you could have a big heavy finishing attack. One of the things, maybe keep your arm elevated, that is a good stance just like this or even more relaxed like that. But a basic four move combo can be as simple as one, two, three, four. Very simple, but it actually still looks more sophisticated than the things that we often see in video games. I also want to add that you don't need to limit yourself to these four move combos. I would love it if um, uh, video games had such diversity that you would switch between combos. They could do the same damage, it's just for more of a visual flair, but there's a random pick as to which four move combo, six move combo, whatever it comes with a weapon, the character initiates, and they could have different starting attacks where one attack could be from this side, one attack could be from the other side. It could, you could start with an upwards attack, upwards, upwards, and this applies to all the weapons that we've talked about. I would love it if every weapon had maybe three to four, four move combos that the character randomly picked between every time he attacked. And so now we come to the two-handed axe. And honestly, I think something basic like this, you don't really hold up a big defense with two-handed axes because they don't have great defense. You need the leverage ready. So something like this, it's perfectly fine, ready for a big attack because this is a heavier weapon, so a big one. And see what I'm doing with my hands? I'm holding the leverage point here. Then when I lift it up, I lower my hand in the attack to get the actual better leverage for the attack. This is better for holding, this is better for attacking. So here, down like that. Back to this, down like that, okay? And then once it's there, you can go with the momentum. So maybe one, two, three. And in reverse, it'd be like this. One, two, three. And I'm not overswinging such a way that I'm like this. There is more overswing to keep the momentum, but it's a heavier, bigger weapon. But the full combo, something as simple, but sophisticated as this. One, two, three, four. Just like that. What we just covered also applies to larger two-handed axes. You can use the exact same weapon animation set that we just went through, where you go hit, 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 
with a big finisher like that, that would work just fine. But because this is larger, you have other options where you could do big wide hits like this and then come back to hits like this. And your starting, you know, stance could be something different, like something like this, where you're walking around. And then from this position, you could swing it from around the head down like that. You just go straight down here. You could try and knock someone, but if unless it doesn't have a point, like a halberd, you don't really want to do that. So you just follow up with another attack if you can. But returning to this stance here, where you can go hit, hit, return here, and hit, hit like that. Works perfectly fine, but what you're seeing is that I'm carrying the momentum with me. Where I went hit, hit like that, carry the momentum, have strength in my stance and position. See this? And I'm stepping with the strikes, and then you can end back here. That's what you'd want to do. When it comes to pole arms, a lot of the animations could be interchanged between pole axe, sword staff, and even perhaps the Bechter Corbin. And so I'll demonstrate just with this uh, halberd here. But with a lot of pole arms, like the pole axe, they actually have a point on the bottom end. And so one of the starting stances is actually this, with the point offending your opponent. And a basic starting attack is actually thrusting with this point, where you'd go thrust and then follow up with an attack, just like that. So it depends if other pole arms have a point. So you might need a different animation set for the pole axe versus, you know, the Victor Corbin or sword staff. But for a halberd or polax, this would work really good where it's thrust, hit, thrust, heavy attack. There's the four hit combo. Thrust, hit, thrust, heavy attack. Would work really good and you could do it with other pole arms. Even if there's no point, you could still hit them with the butt where it's thrust, hit, thrust, heavy attack. Now with the spear, it's mostly self-evident, but the fact that the attack with the shield, when you hold up the shield in defense and you use a spear in Elden Ring, is just the same attack, it is very boring. It would be nice if there was a heavy finisher with the spear. And so you're there, you go to thrust, you go to low thrust, you go to high thrust, and then end with a big thrust like that would be much better. This goes for your two hand, you would go low attack, high attack, low attack, and then heavy attack, work just as fine. One, two, three, four, work really well. And the heavy attack, you could really maximize your reach. So it's one, two, three, and then four, like something like that, could work. And finally, we come to the war bow. And this is a big pet peeve of mine, because if you're fighting giant monsters as an adventurer, at minimum, you're gonna need a war bow. War bows can come in short bow and long bow sizes. Size of the bow doesn't really determine how much power they can do have or how much damage they can produce. But nearly every video game, they show the archers drawing the bows just like their low poundage Olympic bows. And they'd use Olympic style techniques where with a war bow, you would use the techniques more associated with medieval archery and the stances you need to adopt to draw heavy bows. So I might be able to draw it just like this, but it'll put too much strain on my shoulder. And to draw the highest limits of what you can pull, you need to adopt a proper stance, activate your back muscles, usually draw down to get it like that. Do you see the stance I'm doing? It's a lot different than just like, eh, where it's only the shoulder. I'm using both arms, my back, and you can either pull down into it or you can pull up and I'm kind of pushing out with both arms here. So I can do this one like that. But the stance conveys how much weight is it I'm actually holding back. It's really important. Elden Ring kind of did this with the heavy attack with the bow, which I loved where they're leaning back, they're pulling it, but the normal attacks are pittance. So you absolutely can shoot fast, even with a war bow. I can shoot up to 16 arrows in a minute. I actually can do faster than that in one of the other occasions I time myself, but stance conveys power and we're missing it in so many video games. And so if they just got it right, where it's just like and shoot, and then you go and you go back down. Another way is to hold it here and pull out like this. And so you go there, you draw and you go shoot, draw, shoot and keep going. Again, have a look at the stance and my posture to get it in to full draw, just like that, okay? So that's really it. Those are the main medieval weapons that I wanted to demonstrate. Appropriate move sets, stances, like beginning stances, opening attacks and full combos that you could utilize in video games to reflect medieval weapons, 
far more realistically. It would increase the immersion of the game because it would actually would demonstrate the avatar, the characters, with competence, with skill, that they're not doing these wide, brutish swings, that they know how to use these weapons as they logically should. Thank you to everyone for watching, and if you're interested, please make your own weapon move sets and upload them to YouTube with the hashtag in the title or description, hashtag Medieval Combat Reference, and share this video to any creators you would love to see a hashtag Medieval Combat Reference video from and to game developers that you would love to see implement or learn from the examples we give in these videos. And so until then, and until next time, farewell.